Hello, everyone. Jason Hagcomb here, and today I am joined by the King of the North, Craig Shintani, who on Friday night will be taking on Maxime Poulin at Samurai MMA 2 in Montreal, Quebec. Uh, Craig, how are you doing? I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm doing quite well. Well, Craig, this is a fight that is very exciting for a couple guys that are veterans of the Canadian MMA scene. Uh, how'd this fight all come together? We were trying to get it uh, booked for a little while now. They postponed the show a month, so it's been uh, a little delay, but we've been working on it since, I guess, the start of 2022. Um, but yeah, got offered the fight. Thought it'd be a fun matchup. Um, nice to get an opponent to his game, and I knew it would show up, so signed the contract right away, and, and we're off to the races, so. And as well, as you said, uh, you know, your fight, as you said, you're fighting a veteran. Your first time fighting out in Quebec. I mean, you're a, a guy that's known fighting out in, in Western Canada, whether it be your home province of Alberta or out in British Columbia. I mean, Quebec's always been a hot spot for MMA in Canada. How excited are you to, to make the trip, trek out there uh, to the Belle Provence? Yeah, very excited. Um, you know, Quebec has a, a rich history of MMA and it's exciting to finally get out of there. And, and I've heard the city's beautiful. It's going to be nice to, to visit Montreal. So, um, you know, fight in a very uh, uh, exciting place. Finally leave Western Canada. My coach and I have always wanted to go travel for fights and kind of have that experience. We've, uh, we've traveled a little bit, but again, it's kind of just throughout Western Canada. So it seemed like a great opportunity and it's going to be fun going, kind of going into his, uh, his backyard and, and seeing how they uh, like somebody from Alberta coming in. So do you kind of thrive on getting to be the road opponent here where you're, you're probably going to get booed and things of that nature, where you're usually the fan favorite fighting mostly in Alberta. Mm. Yeah. I feel like no matter where I go, I'm getting booze. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I mean like, yeah, at home, obviously it's nice to have friends and family there. Um, you, you get a lot of support, but um, I fought a few times in Calgary and it, it was loud and, I don't know. I like it. I don't know why I like it. Cause I don't like when people dislike me per se, but um, I think it makes it more exciting and it motivates me to, to work harder. So um, yeah, I'm sure it's not going to be quiet and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, have some fun with it. What have you seen from Maxime? Obviously he's coming off a very uh, quick win back at the debut show for a samurai in November with a uh, first round uh, rear naked choke finish. Uh, what have you seen from him that, that excites you about this fight, Craig? Um, what have I seen from Maxime? Maxime, he looks well-rounded, like a solid fighter. He's, uh, he has good pace. He's got a, he's got a solid jiu-jitsu game. It seems like most fights he wants to take it there. Um, so we'll, we've got a good game plan for that. But yeah, his last fight was pretty quick, um, pretty dominant. I don't even know if the guy got hit, which is, uh, you know, it's always impressive to do. but you know, watching his fights in the past, I've noticed some of his opponents have done things that I wouldn't recommend doing in a grappling uh, sequence or scenario. So I think technically I'll, uh, I'll do things differently than the guys that he's been fighting. So uh, that's not taking anything away from the guy. He's again, he's solid, but um, I'm a different style. I'm a different matchup and uh, my skill is very different. So what you've seen in the past with Maxine and his opponents will not be, um, will not be what you'll see. Uh, Friday night and this fight's at featherweight and Craig you haven't fought in fe at featherweight since 2019 obviously before the pandemic and a long time ago what was the decision to, to make the drop down to 145 so I've been fighting um, mainly 55 like you say but it's uh, it's never really been a super hard cut for me um, my last fight I was I think cut from like 162 and I wasn't really even dieting like it was just I'm not a I'm not a big guy per se so um, some of the guys at 55 are, are quite large, 6'1", 6 6'2", 6 um, and they're making big cuts. My last opponent missed weight by like seven pounds. Mm -hmm. So he was like 162 and like no water. Like he was, he was probably like 180 on fight day, I'm guessing. And I'm like 167. So it just doesn't make sense size-wise. Um, so I haven't cut to 45 in a little while, but my frame is, is there. It hasn't changed. So um, I feel confident with everything and I feel like it'll just be, uh, it'll be nice to start a fight without a disadvantage, you know, giving up that size and, and to be fighting guys closer to my size. 
do you wish there would be like something implemented? Because yeah, I remember when you fought Dario Sinagogo and and going into that fight back last March. And I think that's one thing everyone's talking about because now lightweights are pretty much like welterweights or even near, br- bracing on being a middleweight when they step in there for the cage. Do you wish that maybe commissions around the country and North America would put a, like a weight limit percentage you, when you step in on fight day? Yeah, the, uh, the last fight against Dario, they had a, a nice option that... Um, I don't know if it actually happened, but the idea was there. Uh, There was a hydration, like a a weight check for your hydration. You couldn't weigh over a certain amount of weight the next day at like noon or 1 p.m. or something. So I like that idea. You know, if you want to cut a bunch of weight, go ahead, but you can't balloon up to, like you say, like a welterweight, middleweight weight on fight day. Um, I think that would deter guys from trying to make those big cuts. But obviously, it's more work for the commission. You know, it's there's some hoops you have to jump through to make that actually work. So I don't know if we'll see it. I, I would definitely vouch for it, though. I think that's a great idea. Um, otherwise, you're having to do like what one is doing and you have a hydration test and that's that's messy, too. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it is the ongoing battle with MMA. It's the weight cuts and the rehydration and the guys missing by like a lot of weight. So, yeah, exactly. Well, I know some. Uh, promotions in like Sweden do something like that where you have to make an X amount of weight or whatever before you step in the cage. But as you said, you being at featherweight, that should not may, be as much of an issue now for you. And you know, as we talked about, your last fight was against Dario Sinagogo uh, on the BFL's debut show on Fight Pass. Where have you grown as a fighter since then, Craig? I like to think a lot. Um, you know, right after the fight, I got back to, in the gym right away. Um, it wasn't wasn't really like a, a chance to showcase anything it was uh i got hit in a weird scramble scenario where we're kind of clinched up and i just didn't even see it um so you know nothing not taking anything away from the guy he did his job and it was just like i i took him down it felt relatively easy and i kind of let him get back up and i'm like oh, i'll do it again and then i got hit so it's how fights go but since then i've been trying to really refine my game plan and be a little smarter with everything take somebody down keep them there um but my grappling um my whole skill set has improved my grappling has been um it's been pushed a lot so i feel like it's there's have been some big strides and some big improvements with my grappling for sure so um that's one thing i'm excited about against maxime is he's obviously got a good jiu-jitsu game so i'm looking forward to testing myself against that and uh and showcasing some of my skill set because again it's it's been a while since i've been able to grapple for more than 30 seconds in a fight so yeah and i looked on your instagram craig but before this interview i saw you you competed in a lot of grappling tournaments and, and won a couple of them so obviously you feel that's an area that's really improved going into this fight and you know when the two gra- grapplers kind of go in there that usually cancels each other out and it leads to an exciting fight on the feet yeah yeah i think it'll make the style pretty interesting i'm again i'm not going to do some of the things that his opponents have done um I think my skill set is just different, a little, maybe a little bit more advanced. Um, so yeah, I've been trying to compete in jiu-jitsu as much as I can, just roll with the best guys possible. Uh, whenever I go to Salt Lake for a training camp, I try to do a tournament while I'm there because it's different looks, different bodies, uh, some cool tournaments with cool rule sets. So, um, you know, competition-wise, I've been pushed. Training-wise, I've been pushed. And I've been just putting a lot of time and effort into the grappling. So I feel... Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Who you've been training with to, to gear up for this fight against Maxime? I guess my last fight against Dario, we were shut down with COVID. So I had like three training partners. So now we have the gym open and running again, which is awesome. And I have the whole team. So, you know, my usual guys prior to my last fight. So I've got solid guys at my gym at Kingdom MMA. And then when I go to the States, I go down to Salt Lake and I work with, you know, Ramsey and Cord and all those guys down there. Um, and they've got some high level jiu-jitsu guys, um, some very good black belts. So uh, I don't know if you know the names, but there's a lot of, uh, yeah, high level skill sets and, and guys that'll push and guys that can do some, some nice um, displays or examples of, of what I'll see against Maxime. And I guess, you know, you touched on it. I, I totally did forget. Yeah. That fight was in the middle of COVID throughout the country where it was pretty much 
illegal for mixed martial artists to train and be in close contact. And now that's a thing of the past. So that's got to be at least a huge weight off where you're not trying to, you know, sneak in a training session here or there. It's everything kind of back to normal. Yeah, that was a weird one. You know, again, training with like the same three guys, the gym is closed, everything's locked. Uh, flying was weird. The airports were like deserted. It was at the venue, there was no fans. It was just, it was a weird time for everybody. So it's exciting to be back to normal. Again, hear the crowd, make some noise. And, uh, and yeah, training has been significantly better. So feel great with that. And I guess that'll bring me to my last question here, Craig, you're a veteran of the Canadian mixed martial arts scene. And now that COVID seems to be have gone, gone away, a lot of promotions are putting on shows uh, throughout West coast to East coast in this country. Where do you think of the Canadian landscape right now? Hmm. It's a good question. I feel like uh, a lot of guys that were kind of casual and no longer doing it. <laughs> right. COVID kept the more serious guys in it a bit. Um, so I feel like there's less fighters out there and I think a little bit less in terms of promotions as well, but, um, that can be good. You know, you get some more serious guys that kind of refreshes the amateur scene, the new up and comers get a shot now. So I think you'll see a lot more breakthroughs and a lot more serious guys, um, rising. I think the casual guys will maybe filter back in slowly, but again, those serious guys that haven't stopped, they'll be, uh, they'll be stepping up and I think you'll have a nice, batch of guys coming through to the bigger shows pretty soon here yeah and as well like there seems to be more bigger shows obviously you're fighting for the second show here in samurai as mma gets going back in quebec ontario's got a couple of promotions out east has a few and obviously out west is kind of the cream of the crop right now with unified bfl and everything like that so it is great to see as well that scene this scene here in canada start to get going because covid really did a number on it yeah yeah it was a rough go and i'm <laughs> I'm pumped that promoters are still out here pushing through. And I know it was, it was tough for fighters. It was tough for them too. So yeah, we all have to be a part of building it back up and, and hopefully um, the promotions that haven't been active will come back and, and we can pick up where we left off. Yeah. And as well, I guess, you know, as I said, this is the second samurai show. That's going to be exciting for you too, being on a second show in a new pro in a new province for yourself in Quebec and, and helping trying to re build the Canadian landscape right now. Yeah. I feel like Samurai has got a, they've got a great thing going on with the talent they're bringing in and, you know, the, the promoter and the matchmakers, everybody with Samurai have been great to work with. So I feel like they're going to have a bright future uh, in the Canadian MMA scene. And if I can, you know, be a small part of getting that going, it's exciting, you know, looking back down the road when I say, yeah, I fought for Samurai too. Now they're on Samurai 50. Like, that'll be cool. A cool yeah. story. You the old TKO days. And um, I think that's, it's just history. It's cool to be a part of. So. Well, Craig, we very much look forward to seeing your fight uh, this Friday against Maxime Poulin. Uh, before I let you go, plug yourself out there on social media where people can, can follow you and, uh, and find you. Yeah. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, the usual stuff. I don't, I don't go on a tremendous amount. I'm not really a social media guy, but Shintani MMA. Um, yeah. Follow me. Follow the fight. It's going to be a great card. And uh, yeah, don't miss it. Uh, we can't wait for it, Craig. That's Craig Shintani. He's taking on Maxime Poulin this Friday at Samurai MMA 2 in Montreal, Quebec. Th Craig, thanks for the time. Thank you. Appreciate it.